Defining Organic Production. This is Unit 2 of SLF 114. Um, I'm Julie Larson, and I'm the be the narrator, and I'm also a developer of this course. The Organic Foods Production Act of 1990 had three purposes, and the first one was to establish the national standards uh, so that things would be uh, kind of a level playing field. The second one was to, uh, uh, by creating these national standards, you could assure the consumers that uh, something that's labeled certified organic had met uh, a consistent list of standards. And the third thing was uh, it helped to facilitate uh, interstate commerce because uh, the if something is certified organic uh, in New York, it's going to have to same the, meet the same standards as something that's certified uh, organic in California or Illinois or Florida, that they're all going to have to abide by those same standards and rules. And this really helped to uh, clarify what the labeling meant for the farmers and for the consumers. So who decides what the standards, organic standards, are? Well, there's the National Organic Standards Board. And this board is appointed by the Secretary of Agriculture. And it's a federal advisory committee. So they look over um, and decide, basically, if something meets those rules and regulations that were initially uh, determined what is certified organic or what should those growing methods be or those pesticides be that are allowed. Um, so this board decides whether an, uh, any of these new things that come up will fit within those standards. Um, the USDA must approve and adopt these recommendations uh, before it becomes policy. So even though they make the recommendations, it really, until it gets um, the USDA says OK, they, it just stays as a recommendation. The NOSB is made up of a variety of, I guess you could say, shareholders in the certified organic world. Uh, so there's four farmers or growers. Uh, three environmentalists or cons uh, conservationists, three uh, public interest advocates, two handlers or processors, uh, one retailer, a scientist, and a USDA accredited certifying agent. In order for the uh, to ensure that the standards are being followed by a farm or processing facility, they need to um, be certified. And uh, once they're certified, they can sell or label or represent their products as organic. Um, if, uh, for whatever reason, the organic operation uh, turns out to be in violation of the USDA organic regulations, uh, but they are promoting themselves as organic. There are financial penalties up to about $10,000 for that business. Uh, and also, if they are certified organic, they can have the, their uh, certification suspended or revoked, as in the case of a poultry process, uh, certified organic poultry processor in Illinois, Central Illinois. They lost their certified organic uh, certification, which meant that the poultry processors in, in that were taking their chickens or turkeys or um, uh, any of the other smaller poultry, they, if they were certified organic, uh, they now lost their certification also because they no longer had a place to take their um, poultry for processing. Uh, 
uh, created a number of problems for um, a lot of the poultry uh, producers in Illinois, certified organic poultry processors, I mean poultry producers. Also, um, in order for the certification process to be handled, uh, there uh, it, it's done through a third-party certifying agency that is accredited uh, with the USDA. There are about a hundred certifying agencies in the US and overseas that will certify growers, processors uh, for um, to be certified organic uh, through the NOP program. So they don't have to be just in the US, but international companies and farms can also uh, uh, be labeled uh, according to the standards for the USDA. Uh, these agencies are accredited by the USDA, so they have to go through rigorous uh, paperwork and uh, understanding of the um, standards and then they hire um, inspectors that will uh, go out to the farms and actually conduct the inspections. Uh, the main purpose of these certifying agencies is to ensure that the products uh, do in fact meet or exceed all of the standards set out by the NLP. Very important that they do that. Uh, these certifying agencies are also quite different even though they have the same goal. They can have a different fee structure. Um, they can, uh, um, depending on, uh, uh, some of them might uh, be more uh, versed in livestock, some might be more in row crops. So when you're thinking about finding a certifying agency, it's really important to find one that uh, suits your needs uh, and will actually help you to get your certification. So um, we're going to talk a lot more than the, about this uh, in, a, in a few weeks here. Um, and walk through the entire uh, process. The USDA organic labeling is broken out into four separate um, possibilities. So first being 100% organic, it is what it is. It has to be 100% organic products in that container in order to be labeled 100% organic. Next one down, you can be certified, you can have a label that simply says organic. Um, and this means that you have to have 95% of the ingredients uh, are uh, certified organic. Um, when they talk about the non-agricultural substances, usually they mean uh, salt and water. Uh, so, uh, you indeed, for the, to be uh, labeled as organic, you have to have 95%. The other um, labeling that can be done is uh, simply made with organic. And this is uh, usually for products that have more than one ingredient in the list. Um, and uh, usually several, um, and where the they're using at least 70% uh, certified organic uh, products. So um, uh, the so as long it can say made with organic, but they cannot put the USDA organic seal. They cannot use that. And if you are using less than 70% organically produced ingredients, uh, again, of course, no seal can be used. Uh, and uh, you cannot uh, label it as organic. You can only list the ingredients that are certified organic in the ingredients list. Uh, 
uh, you cannot put on the packaging anywhere else that it is uh, um, uh, made with organic. That has to be at least 70% ingredients. So the USDA's National Organic Program, uh, while providing the strict standards, growing standards and processing standards that uh, are uniform and that all uh, growers have to abide by throughout the country, and if they're labeled certified organic uh, in other countries as well, by having those standards, uh, it's allowed for much better consumer understanding uh, at the grocery store. Uh, people can see that label and, and be assured that these standards that have been in place are actually uh, people, uh, growers have been inspected, and that food uh, that's labeled certified organic is in fact following the very strict standards um, that the USDA has has put into place.